Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we will see how to recreate a reveal of this type with a destruction of an object which reveal a product inside with collision on the ground and on the product. This tutorial will cover all the parts of the creation until the destruction, but if you want to go further, I explain in bonus tutorial on my Patreon how to add extreme detail in the debris, texture the VDB mesh and how to do a good compositing. Ok, enough talk, let's start the tutorial. Ok, so here's the watch model I used for my project. You can see that it's a model with a lot of objects inside, so it's not really appropriate for a type flow simulation. So what we will do is to convert this complicated model into one and single shape, as you can see here. I just cut it the part I don't need for my final simulation, because as you can see, if I activate the sphere used for the destruction effect later, you can see that I want the watch to be completely inside my sphere. Okay, so to create your model, it's very simple. You just have to duplicate all the objects of your original watch. You can then select any object, select attach, and simply all the elements of your object. And click on attach to create your unique shape. Perfect. Once the mesh is created, what we want now is to create the mesh that will be used to cut or sphere. For that, I will just duplicate my object. I will rename it Watch Push and I will now add a push modifier. Set a value of 0.4 maybe and I think it's good. We can see here the difference between the two mesh. Ok, now I will just reactivate uh, my original sphere and create a type flow setup. Open Editor and I'm going to create a Browse VDB. I will now add an object to SDF and pick my Sphere 1. If you want to improve the resolution of your VDB, you can go back in the Browse and decrease the voxel size. 0 0.7 is enough. I will now add another object to SDF, set the mode to Subtract and pick the watch push. Ok, now if I press F3, I can see in the wireframe the shape of my watch created inside the sphere. And if I activate my created mesh, we can see that it matches perfectly with the shape, with a slight space between the two shapes. It's perfect. Ok, now what I want to do is to fracture this sphere, so I will now add a VDB to particles operator. Set the timing to frame and set 20 to 20. I will now add a broad oil fracture and link this new event to the VDB2 particles. And if I go forward in the timeline, we can see that to the frame 20, the mesh is fractured by the broad oil. It's perfect. We can, if you want, up the count for the broad oil maybe 500. What we want now is to make it all physical, so I'm going to add a physics shape here. And now we see that we have a physical simulation from our VDB sphere. But we have a problem here, and it's that uh, we still have this sphere, so to fix that we will now create a VDB clear. We see that all the simulation is delayed, so we will go in timing, frame, and start for the range to 20. And now, if we restart the simulation, we can see that the problem is solved. We have a correct simulation. But this number of particles does not allow us to see if the boolean worked, so I will just decrease the number of points for my Voronoi. And yes, we can see that the effect is good. We have a mesh cut by the watch and everything is physical. Ok, we can see the cut in the mesh. Everything works fine, but what we want for this effect is to gradually activate the destruction. I will therefore create a sphere and animate it to gradually come into contact with my original sphere. Maybe like this. Good. 
and in TypeFlow, I will add a surface test operator. Pick my sphere two. I cannot duplicate the display and the physics shape. Ending the surface test to this new event. I cannot go back to the surface test. And for the type, I will select volume inside. You can add if you want a little noise. I will now return to the raw noise fracture and increase the number of points, maybe 500, and a little variation. Okay. Now we will go to frame 20 and create slightly more interesting fracture. So I'm going to add the net fracture. Great. We can see the result here. I deselect fracture edge and center pivot. We can see the change on the mesh. I will now increase the fracture depth to 0.7 and the corner to 2. I think it's really good like that. I can apply the animation. Go to my V-Ray camera angle and we see that we start to have an animation that is close to the result we want. Great. I think the animation is a bit fast, so I'm going to go to TypeFlow, Retime More, by Speed and select a speed of 70. I think it will be better like that. Okay, that's much better. The animation is cool. But we see that there is always a problem in this simulation. We have no collision with the watch. So to fix that, I will go back in TypeFlow. I create in the event tree a physics collision. And I cannot pick my watch collision. Okay, so if I launch my simulation, we can see here the mesh inside, but I forgot some step. I will go back in the ult type tab and select convex to show you how it works and activate the display. We can see if I move forward in the animation that we have no collision, but it's not perfect because we can see here that the collision lines do not fit the shape of my watch perfectly. So what we want is a perfect collision shape. So I will change the type to mesh. And we see here with the display that the shape of the collision will be done perfectly with the shape of our watch. Perfect. I cannot deselect the display. And if I run the animation, we can see that we have a nice destruction with a collision on the ground and with the watch. It's really good. Now what you will have to do is to play with the bonds and the friction to have the right interaction with your watch. You can, for example, lower the restitution to have a lower bonds or increase the friction. It's up to you to try to get the effect you want. We can always check that the cut was made by the watch. It's perfect. The watch is really well integrated inside our destruction. Okay, now what we want is maybe add more small debris inside the destruction. So what I'm going to do now is to create a split operator. 50 is a good value for the moment. And I link the split to the physics collision. I cannot duplicate the Voronoi, maybe decrease a bit the total point, 10. And of course, I duplicate the display. Okay, so basically 50% of the debris that collide with the watch will be broken into 10 other debris. And what could be nice is to do the same thing with the ground. I will therefore create a plane to simulate my ground, like that. I will now just duplicate the physics collision. Select convex. Delete my watch collision. 
and I cannot pick this new plane and link this new operator to the split. Perfect. Now we will have additional destruction with the collision on the ground and on the watch. I think 10 is a bit low for the new Voronoi. I really want small debris, so I will up the count to 45, I think. And now if I restart the simulation, we can see that we have the effect we want. We have a progressive destruction of our mesh with fracture for certain pieces into finer debris. We have our collision with the watch and with the ground. It's a great base for our project reveal. Okay guys, so here is the first big step to recreate the effect I did for this tutorial. If you want to know how to add extreme detail in the debris, texture this VDB mesh correctly and have tips on compositing, you can take a look on my Patreon. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot of things. Don't forget the thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work. And you can follow me on Instagram and beyond if you want. See you soon for next tutorial guys. Bye.